Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Servants by Design show slash podcast. We are so glad that you could join us today. Uh, I am Stephen Boster, your host, um, and I've got a special guest today. Here at Servants by Design, we want to help you promote a more spirit-filled life. And uh, many of you know, we use the what's called the process spiritual model, but in all openness, it is the spiritual application of what is known as the process community communication model. And so today with us, I have a certifying master trainer on the process communication model. And you'll probably hear us say PCM from here on out um, to use that small acronym to help us. But I have Dr. Nate Regeer. Everybody say, yay. Hey, welcome, Nate. Hey, hi there. <laughs> um, full disclosure, um, I like Nate. So um, I, Nate is the guy who trained me um, who certified me as a trainer in the process communication model. Um, but he is my go-to guy on all things PCM and so much more. So Nate, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Oh, I am so glad you asked. What a wonderful opportunity and congratulations on this podcast. What a wonderful service. Yeah. Thank you. Well, um, for those of you who may not know Nate, I'm going to cheat and off your latest book, latest book is seeing people through. Um, and I, I have this in front of the screen. So those who are watching the video, you see that, it, see it pretty well, but it allows me to cheat. So you don't really see that I'm actually reading, but <laughs> um, it says Dr. Nate Regeer, PhD is the CEO and founding owner of Next Element Consulting, a global leadership firm dedicated to bringing compassion into the workplace. He is the co-author of Beyond Drama, Transcending Energy Vampires, which I have that one, uh, both audio and, and the book it's, itself. Um, he also is the author of Conflict Without Casualties, a field guide to leading and leading with compassionate accountability, which I also have the disc, the book, and the audio, and the uh, I have a physical book and the electronic book because it's a fabulous book. Um, he hosts podcast uh, called On Compassion with Dr. Nate, which is great. You need to look it up and add it to your podcast list today on Compassion with Dr. Nate and writes a weekly blog, contributes to multiple industry publications, blogs and podcasts such as this one. But this is his latest book, Seeing People Through Unleash Your Leadership Potential with the Process Communication Model with Ford by Dr. Taby Kaler. And I'm going to we're going to get into that, who that is. I'm pretty excited about having that discussion. Nate, Whew, that was a mouthful, but I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> well, the best part of the whole introduction is that we are friends. I'm so glad yep. to know you and looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, thank you. Right back at you. Thanks. All right. Well, first off, I thought it would be great um, because you learned PCM from Dr. Taby Kaler himself. And so I thought, well, how, why don't we just say, what's the story of PCM? Who is Dr. Kaler? And um, gosh, what is this whole process communication model? So how did it all begin? Oh, man, oh, I love, love this trip down memory lane. And for the people that know the process spiritual model, spiritual applications, you've probably heard of Bob Maris, who, who was a good friend of Tavy Kaler's and who also lived in Little Rock, Arkansas, where the whole story started in that area. And um, they, they've been friends for their whole lives. And so it's, it's, it's really a story of all of these things uh, coming together. I was introduced to PCM by my mentor and supervisor when I was a clinical psychologist. And I was working in a lot of different, I was doing some neuropsych testing, addictions treatment, therapy, marital mm -hmm. therapy. And my, my mentor had been trained by Taby Kaler and, and had done PCM in his previous um, practice. And so I learned about, it. I learned about Taby and it just so happened back then, uh, Taby was still certifying people. He was still had an active practice. And so Arkansas it was only about an eight hour drive from where I was. So once I had done my prerequisite training, I went down there to get certified. <laughs> I was not prepared. I was not oh. prepared. Um, I no, no, I'm not slamming the, the person who gave me the training and the prerequisite training, but uh -huh. I just wasn't prepared. And I say that because 
I was so amazed by Taby's grace, his patience, his perseverance, him, him living the tools of PCM to help keep me motivated, <laughs> keep me coming back every day and help me survive this thing. So I was able to meet, meet the qualifications to become a trainer uh, mm -hmm. during that week. But it was really a, a very special time getting to know this, this, this legend, the person, the human being behind this, who's an absolute you know, technically a genius. I mean, he's, he's one of the smartest people I've ever met, but also um, unlike a lot of really smart people, he's really good with people. Uh, <laughs> that's, you know, uh, he's All smart right. with people as well. Right. Um, yeah. So um, I, I, I know I, I have something behind me. I, I want to share uh, at okay. some point, but it really is a bit about my story and my journey with Taby behind here, whenever, whenever the time is right. But that's mm -hmm. kind of how I met him. I got certified by him and we, we've just um, been close ever since. And, and I kept going back to Arkansas to study under him and to mentor under him and to become a master trainer and then get certified in the therapy and the spiritual and the, um, and then eventually become a certifying master trainer. But mm -hmm. um, I see him now as kind of like my second father and mm. um, he's really, really important part of my life. Yeah, he does live it. Um, I, I always appreciate the opportunity when we had trainer days. It was the first trainer days that, that I was able to go to and yeah. had the opportunity to meet uh, Dr. Taby Kaler and Holy cow. He, it just how he connects with everybody yeah. and he's so gracious and he's um i just had a blast and and, and i've got uh, on the website i got pictures of of me goofing off with Taby, you know yeah. doing a nice photo op and, and being goofy and he was a lot of fun um, yeah remember how yeah. he'd sit back he'd sit back in his chair in the corner and you could tell he was just so proud of his flock yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, whether you'd make eye contact with him or whether you talk to him, it was always, he was always using living the tools and everyone right. that talked to him or interacted with him felt seen, felt heard uh, yeah. because he used the tools to communicate in, in the way they wanted. Uh-huh. Yep. And uh, it, it, it's kind of in awe. I was in awe of it at the time because I was just learning PCM and at how he was able to do it at the speed of conversation with everybody. Right. And, yeah. and uh, I would say without effort, almost said flawlessly, of course it's flawless. Cause I mean, it's just, but, but I mean, without any effort and you could see every person interacting with him mm -hmm. in their style and just appreciating it. And it was just, and it was at that moment, I realized this is the best tool that's out there on communication. Mm -hmm. Um, and, yep. and am I biased? Yeah, absolutely. But here's the thing. I use it every day. Every day I use yep. it. Yep. It's immediately practical. So yeah. So, okay. I, I'm biased too, but it's, uh, I, I would say that I came to PCM later in my life after I had studied a lot of communication tools, a lot of psychology, a lot of theory. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't just like the first thing I came across that I loved. And I continue to work now in the corporate world where most of our clients have seen and done the best of the best tools that are out there. Mm -hmm. And continually, our research shows that about 90 to 95% of people that say this is the most, most effective and powerful communication tool they've ever used. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Yep. Data yep. don't lie. Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. <laughs> but they are only are only one of the six perceptions. So <laughs> yeah, right. They're also not the truth. <laughs> That's good. For those of you who have been exposed to PCM, you get that joke. <laughs> so so how did what was hit? What was Dr. Kaler's big launch into? coming into understanding PCM. Like it was, it was something called, was it mini scripts? Was that yeah. the beginning? Yeah. Well, he, you know, he, he studied developmental psychology and he would, he went to school at Purdue and in studying, studying human development, he really interested in how personality develops, how, how people, how children kind of incorporate um, different developmental stages and stuff as they're growing up. But mm -hmm. really when he was studying transactional analysis in the seventies also really started becoming so interested in second by second interactions between people. And, you know, back in those days, they would do like these marathon therapy sessions and, you know, days and days and these therapists, and it was really intense, but they would do a lot of video recording. And he, he started noticing patterns and he recorded a lot of interactions between people that were in and out of distress and interacting mm -hmm. in a healthy way, miscommunicating. Mm -hmm. 
and he's and he started you know he's such a mathematical mind um for the for the pcm folks in there out there his base for is thinker um mm -hmm. and so always crunching numbers looking 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 for patterns and so he started mathematically analyzing what he saw and he noticed six distinct patterns of behavior that that were fleeting second second long sometimes in the middle of a sentence is all it took that would indicate a person was leaving kind of an okay okay space mm -hmm. and moving into starting to miscommunicate and mm. he co he coded these six and he called them mini scripts because it's like a script you it, it's kind of like when you press play on your on your song it plays the song just like it always does right, and right. the scripts would just play and they were so predictable, so sequential, and so observable once he realized what it is you actually look at. And so the mini script mm -hmm. was the first time that anyone had noticed and, and codified observable behavior to see the precursor to some of the more obvious negative stuff that we do. And he was mm -hmm. awarded the Eric Byrne Memorial Scientific Award in the TA community in 19. Yeah, that's a big deal. Big deal. 10,000 peers voted on that. So it was a pretty significant discovery. Yeah. So then what happened next with him? So I, I, as far as obviously that was kind of the beginnings of what is now known as the process communication yep. model. What happened next? I'm, I probably don't get all the chronology, right? I, I it wasn't my strong suit in school, <laughs> but he, so he continued to develop and research and work in different places. He did clinical work with it, different applications um, mm -hmm. where things, two things I think were significant in law, making the model really a global phenomenon. Okay. One of them was the chief psychiatrist for manned spaceflight at NASA heard about, heard about this process of being able to listen to how people said what they said and mm -hmm. really, really be able to anticipate a lot about their behavior and their makeup. And so he brought Dr. Kaler to NASA to kind of corroborate some of the neuropsychological testing, these long neuropsychological tests that they would do. And Dr. Kaler in, in a few minutes could anticipate and predict what it would take the psychiatrist hours and hours and hours of testing to do. And so Dr. Terry McGuire, the chief psychiatrist is really fascinated by this. So they, can, they started to work together and do a lot of validation research at NASA and PCM they be, then became used as the selection and training tool for astronauts for the space shuttle program. So that was pretty significant um, yeah. in terms of its ability to predict behavior, but also teach these astronauts how to communicate with one another in a, in a pressure cooker. Pre yeah. I like that. I like pressure yeah. cooker. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to um, say, Oh, in distressful, you know, stressful situations, but pressure cooker is probably a better word. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of our clients say, Oh, help us pick the right people. We want you to pick, pick this type, this type. It's like, that's yeah. great. But, but unless you know how to communicate with them, it doesn't really matter because you have to be able to fuel the car. If you're going to buy a Tesla, you better have a charging station somewhere. You can't just mm. have one without the other. Um, and probably another significant experience was it just so happened that at the time that he was starting to do his work and people were getting more no known about, or he, he was getting more known, mm -hmm. um, Governor William Jefferson Clinton in Little Rock, Arkansas was also there. So they both lived close to each other. And um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a kind of a famous story about um, Governor Clinton of Chelsea Clinton, which is a daughter of Bill and Hillary, they were receiving death threats on her life and the Secret Service couldn't figure it out. And so they, they heard about this guy that could interpret speech and stuff. So they asked Tavy to listen to the tapes. Tavy helped him, helped him significantly in that investigation. And Bill Clinton, who is a real student of the human condition, uh -huh. uh, master communicator himself, also yep. a member of Mensa, super, super smart, was like, I got to have this. And so he engaged Taby as his um, communication consultant and psychodemographer then and worked with him throughout his whole career. <laughs> wait, wait, what was that word again? Psycho what? Psychodemographer. <laughs> um, you know, we have demographics based on a lot of things, but what about demographics based on personality type? Yeah. And it turned out that that was significant. And so um, he, was, uh, he was President Clinton's and Governor Clinton's personal uh, communication mm -hmm. consultant trainer for many years. Um, Taby Kaler is not a political guy. And so this is by mm -hmm. no means any kind of a political endorsement or statement, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, Bill Clinton loves to communicate. He is a great communicator and he uh -huh. loves these kinds of tools and yeah. used them throughout his career. 
and yeah. continue to use them. Well, to be open, you know, I, I, it doesn't matter which side of the political spectrum you're on or where you're at along the spectrum. Everybody says how good of a communicator Bill Clinton is. They do. And a lot of people who have met him say that they feel like he's known them for his whole life. And mm -hmm. that's because he's using these tools to be able to recognize how we say things and then adapt his communication to meet us where we're at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, interesting mm -hmm. little fact about Clinton, you know, every president after they're done being president, they get used a lot by next presidents. Uh, presidents always are leaning on past presidents for things behind the scenes that we, we don't know about. But Clinton is one of the most called upon presidents in terms of, of diplomacy and communication um, that other presidents uh, since him have called on. Oh, very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Oh, I love little tidbits. Thank you. <laughs> That's my base. That's my thinker base talking. <laughs> no. They help each other out. They do. They know, you know, been there, done that. They know how hard it is and they know they, we all need help. Yep. Well, how many, where are we at today on profiles? How many, I mean, worldwide, there's been over, it was close to, was it 1.7? It's up there. Yeah. Million profiles. Yeah. Um, I know it's, it's accelerating a lot, a lot in the last few years, well over has. a million a couple of years ago. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It is. I like how you said a worldwide phenomenon, because it really is. Yeah. Um, there's people all over the world who use it. And so it's fascinating. But one of the one of the interesting things about the process communication model and one of the things that that you, to your credit, hammer into all of us as your as trainers is we're talking about types in people, not types of people. Um, explain to everybody what you mean by that. All right. Um I, I will illustrate by telling you what I don't mean by it, or I, I, okay. I didn't invent this, but types in people is a principle of PCM, one of the two foundational building blocks. Here's what it's mm -hmm. not. It's not saying I'm an ENTJ. It's not saying, oh, he's an extrovert. It's not saying, well, she's an introvert, so don't expect her to speak up in meetings. It's not labeling people and putting people in a box like you know them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Piece, these six mini scripts, which went on to be developed into the six personality types, exist in all of us to some degree in a preferred set order. They're all measurable. They're all observable through behavior. And every human being that I've ever met and that we've ever profiled has a little bit of all of them. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like mm -hmm. saying, well, I'm a bicep. You know, <laughs> spiritually in the Judeo-Christian, there's a lot of great scripture about you're not just a bicep. You're all these muscles. You can't, right. you know, the, the hand can't say to the foot, I don't like you, you know, right. We are all these muscles, but we all have them developed differently. We use them differently. We're all, we're all, we have different body shapes, even though we all have the same muscles. And mm -hmm. so personality is like that. And so I, I think people can understand that we all have them and they're all like muscles but it goes mm -hmm. a lot deeper than that. The, the fact that there are types in me, not types of people means that everything is inside me mm -hmm. and there is no other, there is no, I'm an introvert, you're an extrovert, or I'm a thinker base and you're a such and such base. Mm -hmm. I have within me the ability to appreciate and honor and love and respect that mm -hmm. type in anybody else. So it's not mm. right to say we're different because you are an introvert. It's like, I have that in me. And if mm -hmm. I truly want to love you, I have to find that part in me, make friends with that part of me. So I can see that part in you, which I think also is really spiritual mm -hmm. um, about how we have to mm -hmm. honor that we are all connected and we all have those right. energy in us, but they're arranged in different orders because diversity is such a wonderful part of the universe. Mm -hmm. I've often said that one of the greatest benefits that PCM has done for me is to help me see people how God has made them beyond their actions or distress patterns or whatever and realize that, okay, well, one, they're, they're in distress or something's going on, but I recognize who they are, how God's made them. And, and I have that in me as well. And I can connect with them on that. And, and it's made me under more 
probably more gracious <laughs> when it comes down to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You got to love those church staff meetings sometimes <laughs> or yeah. those board meetings and things like that. But yeah. it, um, it really has been a, a great tool to really allow me to have grace towards others because then I can connect and go, I understand exactly where you're coming from. Well, um, that's what, that's, one of the other great principles or discoveries of PCM is that behind this negative behavior is a unmet positive God-given need. And there's mm. th this concept of masks, which I, th which I think is a wonderful part of PCM. The mask is the behavior we show when we're in mm -hmm. distress. It's not who we are, but it's what we do. Yeah. And so being able to yeah. separate the person behind the mask from the mask itself both helps us give people grace, but it also helps us not get sucked into it yeah. and think that this <laughs> take so it personal, true. you know? So um, true. Yeah. You know, I don't know how many times someone's been going off on me or judging me or doing stuff that I think is just stupid. And then I'm like, okay, there's a mask. There's a mask that it's coming from right. the mask. Right. What if I treated the God, God built person behind the mask? What would that sound like and yep. look like and feel like? Yeah. Yeah. Well stated. Well stated. Good stuff. But what's interesting is we do, I don't know if it's, you know, nature, nurture, however we want to explain it, but we love to pigeonhole people into a personality type saying, oh, you're like this, or, you know, notice how I point him. Did you catch that? How I pointed oh, yeah. my finger when I did that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're one of those. You're <laughs> right. But what I find is, you know, with many people who, who are doing personality tests in general. Now, I'm not just talking to, you know, there, um, there was a great documentary about personality tests and, and it talked about, it was, it's on HBO max. It's called persona. And it's, it talks about, you know, the dark truth about personality tests, you know, they gave it a great byline. Um, but it's based upon a book called the personality brokers. And it really chronicles the beginning of uh, the Myers-Briggs and how many people use the Myers-Briggs. And there's so many other personality profiles that are out there. What, what is it that makes the PCM so different than these others? And, and what's wrong with these others? Or why is it yeah. these other ones are, they have the issues that they do? Because that was part of, part of the documentary was talking about some of the issues that are problems with some of these pro personality profiles. That's a great, it's a great, anyone who's inter interested in personality, I recommend watching that. And there, I think there's two important issues. And both of these I take up in the beginning of, the, of my book, seeing people through. One of them is the tool itself, the tool, the framework, whatever it is, PCM, mm -hmm. Myers-Briggs, Strengths, whatever. The mm. other one is how we use it. And I think this, mm. this documentary addresses both of those issues, but I, I'd like to answer your question based on both the tool and how it's used. Okay. What makes PCM, I think, special in my, my view, one of them is the types in people, which we've talked about. Mm -hmm. Second of all, it's, it's that it's based on observable behavior, not somebody's theory of behavior. Myers-Briggs is a theory-based model. It was never developed based on observable behavior that, that actually has predictable, consistent patterns. A person can take Myers-Briggs a couple years apart, they'll get a different result. So we're clearly not measuring anything durable about our personality. Mm -hmm. Also, PCM is a communication model. It, it's, it's, we talk about personality ties, but it's really a communication model. And here's yes. why. Yep. Individual differences in personality only matter when there's two or more people coming together to do something. <laughs> You can be on a desert <laughs> island. I don't care what your Myers Big profile is. I don't care if you're an introvert or an extrovert or a high D or a, or whatever. You do it. Right. You do you. Right. And it doesn't matter. But as soon as <laughs> as soon as someone else shows up on Gilligan's Island, yeah. um, all of a sudden we have to start dealing with differences. The way those differences show up is how we communicate. So mm -hmm. personality doesn't matter unless you're talking about communication. And person, personality only matters when you're talking about communication. So PCM is a behavioral model of communication and it teaches people how to actually talk to each other and relate to each other according to personality differences. Mm. And so I think that's where it's important. And then I heard an admonition from one of my favorite master trainers, Edith Doshe from the Netherlands. She said, mm -hmm. here's the thing about PCM. You respond to what you see, not what you know. And 
the minute you think you know somebody or think you know and you have them labeled or pigeonholed, now you're going to respond to your conceptualization of them, not to what's actually coming at you. So mm. PCM teaches you how to watch behavior, respond to what you see, and not get trapped into those um, easy labels, easy stereotypes, oversimplified. Mm. But that's human nature. We all do it. And the best PCM trainers around the world, we all do it. Um, so we're constantly you know, trying to develop good habits to get out of it. Right. Oh, that's a good word. It is so nice. She's so sweet. I've, She's I've awesome. had the, I've had the opportunity to be on several zoom calls with her or, you know, in, in some of the trainings and stuff like that. And, and uh, boy, that is so true. It's who we're interacting with at that moment. Yeah. And here's, here's an example. That statement is an example of a person accessing different parts of their personality and not even putting themselves in a box. She has a strong persister face. She is committed to what works. So she's dedicated to, to fidelity. And you can right. see that in that statement. Here's what's true. But she's also an incredibly creative thinker. And she comes up with these witty ways of saying things that get you to go, hmm. And so that it's also in that statement. Um, and so, and she's also a master relator. She cares about people. And so when you say respond to what you see, not what you know, what I hear mm -hmm. is you're going to see me for who I am, uh -huh. not who you think I am. So right there, she's accessing three or four parts of her own personality, even to come up with that statement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let me come back to one of the interesting things you said, was, you know, it is a communication model and, um, <laughs> sorry, I went back to Gilligan's Island and started thinking about all the different. You know, well, how come every like... episode, somebody shows up that could save them. And then for some reason that person leaves, right. And they, know, <laughs> and they never get saved. I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> What I see what happens a lot of times is people love the personality framework, but they miss the communication side of it. Uh -huh. And um, in, in I think the secret sauce says sometimes we call it that. Well, I always call it that is 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 really that communication side of it yeah. is yeah. being able to connect with each other. Um, yeah. Why, why do you think people really enjoy just the, just give me the personality side. I love that yeah. part and help me figure out who I need to hire or who do I need to uh, have for this position. And, and those are all fine. I think yeah. those are good, but why do we get stuck there? That's a great question. We deal with it in, in our sphere also of, of corporate, we deal with it nonprofit. I think there is something so freeing about PCM and really about any model. If you connect with it, you can say, oh, I've been seen. I've been understood. I'm okay the way I am. I remember feeling that way. My base type promoter is only shared by 5% of the population. I mm -hmm. grew up thinking there was something wrong with me. And my parents are like, who is this alien living in our house? Well, how, <laughs> why, why does he do what he does? So when I understood how I ticked, it was like, right. I gave myself some model said, you're okay. You're legit. Mm -hmm. So I think there's something mm -hmm. really empowering there. And that's awesome. That's amazing. But here's the thing. Knowledge used to be power but it mm -hmm. no longer is. Knowledge is ubiquitous. Now knowledge is responsibility. So the more you know, the more responsible you are. And I think that's where people don't want to go is, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll be introducing PCM to a potential client and they'll say, well, how's it different from the other three models that we used? Mm -hmm. And I'll say, I don't know. Will you show me how you're using the other models? And they'll say, what do you mean? I'm like, well, so you learned Myers-Briggs. So how is that finding its way into your policy manuals? How are you writing memos differently? How is it influencing the way you do performance review systems? How mm -hmm. do you deal with behavior problems using it? And they're like, they look at me like I'm crazy. And that I think illustrates the gap, the knowing doing gap that we know, and we think that's enough, but we're not, then we're shirking our responsibility for knowing mm -hmm. better. We mm -hmm. have to do better. Mm-hmm. How, what was that statistic again? You gave, it was over like 90% of the people have said they love it, that, you know, they love learning it, but there was, there's another one on top of that of, of reasons why they enjoy yeah. those. 90, about 95, 96% over, over the last 13 years say that PCM is more effective than any other model of communication that they've used. And here's why. Number one, practical utility. It gives them real behaviors. That's why they mm -hmm. like it. They'll say things like, well, the other one is just theory, or we didn't get enough training, which goes to the other problem is we don't follow up. Um, 
there are good models out there and, and, and that really do have communication built into them, mm-hmm. but we don't go the extra step. We don't go to say, so how do we talk to them? Uh, um, so I think okay. sometimes we just, we just give it short shrift and we don't invest enough in it. Um, but yeah, practical utility is, is the number one reason. Yeah. I, one of the things in the church, we, you know, we, we joke about is, you know, we've educated people beyond, beyond their application. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. beyond their service and stuff. Um, and it is true. Some, you know, I think back to, you can tell my thinker base going overload here. I love it. Um, uh, <laughs> right you on. won't get any argument from me. <laughs> the, uh, I, is I, I, one of the things I think about, you know, with the church in, in applying uh, PCM and, and PSM has been, man, it's such an incredible tool it does help us understand one another. It does help us see each other, how God's designed us. But yet at the same time, um, I, I like to stop and get that knowledge. I have all these courses, but have I finished them all? No, but I've collected them all, or I've got all these Bible facts. And I, you know, I have an MDiv and, and I can do all this stuff and, and I've got all this knowledge. But yet the question is, is what am I doing with it? It's so funny how sometimes we just check the box yep. And okay, I've done, you know, I've done, I've been discipled. I did my Sunday morning, but yet we miss the point of, of what we do daily. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I know for me, the beauty of PCM and why I love it so much is it, it, it was immediately practical, but it's made a difference in my relationships. It's mm. made a difference in, in how I even view myself. Um, and it has been incredible and, and it's fun. My wife and I joke around, uh, my wife, Kelly, and I joke around that sometimes she's, <laughs> she, she's like, Hey, are you PCM in me <laughs> kind of a thing? Or, or well, she'll, she'll notice you're just in distress, calm down, you know, kind of a thing or yeah. something to that effect and stuff. So what if we ran around to church and said, Hey, are you praying for me? <laughs> are you using that christian stuff on me what are you doing what is that what are you doing? Yeah. well um one of the, the um I, i'm a big fan of your latest book big fan um in fact i got my i got my audible stats um and my number one book was your your book seeing people through i oh, should show it to oh, you thank you um i have a uh, it was the first book I listened to uh, for 2021, um, but that uh, honestly was probably my second or third listen because um, I like to listen to it while I'm working and uh, I've got the digital and I have some of these others. Now, if you've made it this far in the podcast, I'm just going to say this. Everybody see this book here or I'm, I'm holding a book for those who are listening to audio and stuff um, at the end of April. So at the end of this month, at the end of April, I'm going to be giving one away uh, for free because I love it. And it is actually, this is that collection. I got, I bought a bunch and had Nate sign them. So it is signed by Nate. And uh, so all you have to do is go to the Servants by Design Facebook page and and I will have a post there. We'll have this here and just say, hey, uh, I want that book, you know, kind of a thing. And we'll kind of go from there. So and we'll contact you at the end of April. Um, But this um, your book um, for me, it's, it's a great storytelling. But at the same time, you bring up some great um, you've organized it differently than many uh-huh. other books. And, and so uh-huh. I want you to talk about how you organized it, why you uh-huh. did that, and kind of the journey of writing, seeing people through. Oh, yes. Thank you. I'd love to. And um, I also want to throw something out there. I will, I, I'll, I'll, I'll throw in two ebooks into the mix for you to give away also. Awesome. Thank um, you. We, we can do an EPUB version that, that we can give away. So for people okay. that might prefer that, you can give away two more. Uh, e-versions and we'll make those available for you. Right on. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you bet. You bet. Well, there are lots of PCM books out there and they're all great in their own way. And uh, behind me, I actually have one, the original, it's called the mass mystery of Re- management. management. And it was a fable. It, Tavy wrote a fable about the six personality types and, and like it was a whodunit, a uh, wonderful, wonderful book. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you might see here above the book is a, um, a uh, magnifying glass. Um, that magnifying glass comes from Tavy. That's the magnifying glass that was on the front of the book. 
<laughs> um, and he gave it to me as a, as a gift when he moved from Arkansas. And behind me, what you can't see is a mirror, an antique mirror that is inside the book is a picture of a mirror. And I didn't know this. Um, he also gave that to me that he inherited from his family. Um, he didn't tell me this, but until when I got these, he said, did you know that PCM is a magnifying glass and a mirror? Whoa. And I had no idea. And that was like, <clears throat> right? It's a magnifying glass yeah. and a mirror. And so that's kind of how I've been thinking about it. And so most of the other books about PCM, they're pretty technically written. They'll, they'll dedicate sections to the concepts of PCM. We'll explain mm -hmm. it. Maybe sometimes mm -hmm. we'll explain it through like um, the eyes of a child or, you know, in the spiritual version, different, mm -hmm. different types. Mm -hmm. What I, what I, I love fables. I love stories and I get into those stories and I learn good that way. And I know some people prefer to learn that way. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to just write another book about PCM. I wanted to write a book about living and leading and then let PCM be the framework that can enhance that. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of go the back channel. Um, and I wanted a book about leadership because that's our, our thing. I, and, you know, millions of people have done PCM, but very few people proportionally in the world have ever heard of it. Al mm -hmm. Almost no one has heard of PCM compared mm -hmm. to a lot of things. So, so leading with the word PCM didn't seem like a way to open doors. And so I thought I'm going to lead with people and leadership. Mm -hmm. um, so the book was organized as a fable and the, um, the main character, Kayla is a millennial and uh, she's patterned um, after it's no secret. She's patterned after an amalgamation of two of my daughters um, <laughs> uh, who are now, who are now coming into the workforce and starting to get jobs and experiencing the world of conflict and different personality yeah. types and leadership and all that. And she finds her way. And she, she like, like every good story, she, she encounters a mentor. She goes through a lot of journeys. She struggles with things. She has her own misgivings. Um, and through this, she learns about herself. She learns about what it means to see herself through. Um, and she also learns that personality is not about seeing through people. It's about seeing people through. Mm -hmm. And she learns to see herself through and then start to see others through as a leader. And so the, the, each chapter is organized around a, a significant issue for leaders, not a topic of PCM. So the chapters are titled things like, like honesty, hypocrisy. Um, influence, um, agility, these big words that are big issues for people that are in leadership in any mm -hmm. industry, any sphere. And then we talk about those and then we bring in PCM. How can PCM give us a different way, maybe change our mindset about it, give us new tools to live more fully into who we're meant to be as a leader and who we're capable uh, of being. So that's roughly kind of how it's organized. But, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'll tell you this as, as two fellow Based thinkers. We like to kind of know what's the structure, <laughs> what's the main points. And uh, people who read the chapter will notice every chapter starts with a couple paragraphs of kind of, here's my, here's my statement on this topic. Yeah. Da, 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 yeah. da, da. And then the story resumes. Yeah. And that came later. The publisher actually, oh. my editor said, you know, for those, there's people that like to skim the top, just the top first page of every chapter. Mm -hmm. And the way you have it structured, mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to get the gist. So mm -hmm. if you would just add a basic summary and then they can do that all the way through and then decide mm -hmm. if they care about the story, which is really about appealing to different personality types. Yeah. Um, and so the book has a little bit for the, my, my mom, Rebel and Harmonizer Energy, she just wanted to keep finding out what's Kayla going to do today. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, so there's a little bit for everybody. In mm -hmm. the uh, one of the things I did like was having that little bit of brief info at the beginning and then continuing the story. Like Lincioni's books, he does the whole story, the fable. And then at the end, he gives that, you know, the chunk. So you could do either. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like the change up. I liked it differently, having that as part because, okay. I kind of have an idea. There's, there's that thinker, you know, mm -hmm. where, where we're headed, you know, what, right. okay, here's what's going to be happening with Kayla and stuff. So. Yeah. Well, and you know, a fable is going to, there are real people in this story and these people are, are their personalities are a certain way. So throughout the story, I tried to illustrate the interactions between different types, mm -hmm. but for people that say, well, what about this type? You know, I understand now that this type does these things in distress, but what about this one? Um, you didn't cover that. Um, and so at the end of every chapter, there's a table that gives you all six of everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I will say that on my second time through, I was like, 
oh, I see what he's doing here. You know, something that you referenced later, but it comes back. So it, it was, you did that several times, which was really nice. I was There's like, a lot oh. of layers. There are a lot of layers. Yeah. yeah, it's well done. It's well done. I think that's why it's one of my favorite PCM books. Well, it is well, my favorite you. PCM book and stuff. So oh. it is. Um, so with what's the journey been like with seeing people through? Now, one of the, and the reason I asked that is there's something that you've done, particularly with seeing people through that many leaders may not know about or an option that they have is they can get a leadership profile. Um, with that. Talk about that and, and how that came to be and why you did that. Thank you. The, uh, you know, our focus is leadership. Um, mm -hmm. And we had a vision, we've been wanting to write a PCM book for 10 years, and we've had a vision for a, a ecosystem for leadership, not just a PCM for leaders, but a true ecosystem where PCM can, we, can be made accessible for leaders and enhance leadership. And mm -hmm. so when we started writing the book, we, there were two other prongs of this project, which was a PCM profile specifically geared for leadership. And the challenges leaders have like decision-making, mm -hmm. influence, unconscious bias, you know, these really difficult things. Um, and so we partnered with Kaler Communications who kind of owns these, this intellectual property to say, we'll get the mm -hmm. book and then we'll do a leadership profile so that if people are reading the book and they wanna say, well, what about me? I wanna know my right. structure so I can kind of join the journey, join Kayla's journey. Mm -hmm. So we, that, that's mm -hmm. launching, that's, that's been out and it's actually launching in a new, in a whole new branding um, here in the next week or so globally. And then there's a third prong, which is coming up this coming year, which is a PCM for leaders module series built for much more of a virtual world, much more modular. So PC, people can really go learn now and develop the communication competencies to mm -hmm. implement PCM in all areas of leadership, from mm -hmm. influence to self-care, to resiliency, to inclusion. Uh, and that's going to be coming as the third prong. And so these all hopefully can work together to make an ecosystem for leaders. Nice. Wow. Well, well done, Nate. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, we've had the pleasure of seeing what the profile looks like and it's fabulous. Um, it's a great profile. So here's, here's how I'm going to wrap up. First off is I'm going to let everybody know, don't forget um, on our Facebook page, Service by Design uh, Facebook page, just we're going to give away not only a book, I'll send you a book, but also Nate's going to have two e-copies, EPUB books available too as well. So thank you. That's exciting. Thanks yeah. so much for that. And uh, so all you have to do is we'll have more information on the Facebook page where you can just say, hey, I want that book. And then we'll do the drawing at the end of April. Um, the last day of April, and then we will contact you uh, privately. We'll, we'll just do a DM directly to you uh, to get your information where to send those to. Um, the other thing I want to let you, know, you guys know about is if you want to go more into PCM, you want to go more into understanding the process communication model, not only can we do that here at uh, Servants by Design, uh, but also you can check Nate out at next-element.com. Um, www.next-element.com. Please check him out there. Check out their website there. Also, don't forget to check him out on his podcast um, on compassion uh, with Nate. And uh, you can find that. You'll see his friendly mug on the cover of the podcast, <laughs> <laughs> the podcast cover and stuff. Nate, where else can people find you um, on the interwebs? <laughs> I love seeing Well, that. if they want to find me, people know how these days. And uh, But the website is really the best place. We've tried to make that a, a, a place where you can go get whatever you want mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. yeah i'll just direct people there yep and also check us out on servantsbydesign.com you'll see a blog post and we'll direct you there'll be links there to not only nate's books uh to amazon but also uh to the website as well nate this has been fun thank you this is oh, really you are good. welcome what a joy love yeah. talking about this stuff and love uh really really um uh, I get great joy from seeing the impact that it's making in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Thank you. All right, everybody. Well, hey, thanks so much for joining us and uh, check us out at our page, servantsbydesign.com. That's kind of our hub for everything where you'll find our podcast, our Facebook page, everything else um, social media wise is there. So thanks so much. I hope you have a great day.